you know how like athletes love to thank God when like the Saints win a yeah. game? I always think like how funny would it be if God really like had like just like a favorite athlete <laughs> and through their whole life in like college he's like breaking kids like Achilles tendons like <laughs> do it all for that him. every bad thing happening globally is like in the name of uh, giving me more Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Phineas. Uh, he's one of my favorite artists of all time. Also one of the coolest guys. We have a whole lot to discuss. Optimus is his latest album. Plus, happier than ever. He's on tour. Please subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends. Leave your honest feedback in the comment section below. And subscribe. I beg you. And today's conversation is happening because of State Farm. Everyone likes a great deal. Like savings, markdowns, and lunch specials. But when it comes to car insurance, we know the right place. It's State Farm. Offers surprisingly great rates for your ride. You don't need to have a friend who has a connection or call in a favor. State Farm has options like insuring your ride and your home and getting you great rates on both because insurance shouldn't put a hole in your wallet. Those are some good neighbors over at State Farm, and they're in your corner. No promo codes, no waiting around for holiday deals, no sales sections. State Farm offers surprisingly great rates because, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com. Let's get a quote today. Enjoy our conversation, okay? Thanks for being here. Let's do this. Hi, beautiful human. I'm Zach. Uh, that's Dan. Yo. And Phineas is back on the couch. Ooh. Thanks for having me. It's this treat to be here. I'm so excited, dude. It's going to be fun. I, I genuinely and deeply enjoyed your show the other night. Hey, thanks for coming. Yeah. I was uh, I was thinking in preparation for this. I was like, I hope he comes to one of these because I think then we'll have then we can talk about it. We have a lot to discuss. We have an album to dive into, but really in particular, I really, I mean, there's so much, but I want to start with the performance because there's so much rock star energy exuding from you. <laughs> is that figured out and calculated or is that natural? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. I guess like, I guess it's the, re it's, it's my response, you know, subconsciously to like the, to being on stage and playing those songs like it's not it's not some act but it's also not like <laughs> i don't mean to start this show this way but like have you ever met young blood yeah <laughs> like yeah. he's that way off stage too yeah, he sits on this couch and he screams he's like mate it's jokes mate and he's like <laughs> screaming and shifting around his seat like that's to me it's there's a duality but it's but that's not to say that when i'm doing a performance it's a facade like that is the the sort of like the thing that happens to me when I'm up on stage doing the songs and 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 you know it's my interpretation of the songs. It's like how I I mean that's like how I would dance around the studio when I was making them too, but it isn't the energy that I have you know sitting in a, a chair talking to people. Is so fair to say it's a shade of you? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good uh, a good description of it. Yeah, I think that's right. Is it the same shade on stage that is making the songs, or is yeah, there more depth? Degree. Yeah, I would say that, like, you know, because I'm only three shows into this tour talking to you right now, and I would say that, like, yes, because different songs bring out different stuff, right? So, like, a song like Only a Lifetime, I'm just sitting there singing it, yeah. and so that's how it was in the studio. And then a song like Kids Are All Dying is, like, sort of boisterous and bombastic, and that's kind of how it was when I was recording it, so, yeah. Is it weird for you to see devil horns in the audience? Because <laughs> I saw that a lot, dude. Like this? I yeah yeah like really people <laughs> rocked. That's awesome. And, and it's such an eclectic crowd. It is yeah isn't that cool? I, it's it makes me happy that they enjoy art that has depth to it and meaning Thanks, man. and it isn't shallow and when Thanks, you man. really listen to the music thank th you there's something there. Thanks man. Are you an optimist? No 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 I'm not at all I'm I'm super pessimistic by nature, um, and sort of in addition to that line in the first song about sort of like buying these concert tickets way too far in advance and thinking like pretty optimistic thinking that we'll still be together um it, you know to me optimism is like aspirational for me like i i would love to be optimistic i try to sort of force myself into being optimistic and um yeah i'm definitely not naturally predisposed toward that i feel like i'm pretty pessimistic by nature but i think that sometimes i use that as an excuse to like give up on stuff or, you know, assume the worst. And at my most optimistic, I'm like the most hardworking. So I, I try to, I try to be optimistic. Does it come in waves for you? Yeah, or is for it, sure. 
like every day could be different. Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's situational. It depends on like if I'm doing something that I'm like intimidated by or, you know, super nervous about maybe. Yeah, it, it's definitely different every time. And obviously you, you, you can feel confident and hopeful about the future in so many different ways. Life. Sure. The, the, the shared reality that we all face together. And yeah. You dive into all of that. When you start this album, yeah. do you set goals or do you just go? I do typically like to, I was always like a kid that was, you know, when I first started writing songs, I would be like writing track lists for albums, like in notebooks. And they'd be like track lists with song names of songs that Did didn't exist? exist. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's always come from a kind of conceptual place and it's been sort of a gradual journey to kind of like not let um, expectation or preconception control the end result because I'm, I'm usually happier with the end result when it's not as preconceived. I think like in this album's case, there were a couple songs that were kind of high concept and it was sort of like, like the album was supposed to start and by supposed to, I mean like in my head when I started making it, I was like, I'm going to start the album with the kids are all dying and then I'm going to end the album with a concert six months from now. And then it was about like actually making the songs and being like, mm, concert six months from now should be the beginning of this album. And it doesn't matter that I, I didn't intend that to be like, this is, it should be that way. And then kids are all dying is a great track two. And then w what should the ending be? Oh, how it ends makes sense to be the ending. It was like that kind of, you know, allowing yourself to be wrong and change your mind and stuff, which I think, uh, generally creative people sometimes are like bad at changing their mind is that something that you learn over time like is yeah. that a big difference that you acquire between blood harmony and optimus this idea that you could be flexible you don't need to be locked in <laughs> i think those two projects i was pretty flexible on i think it was sort of between like being in a band in high school and then now was like the real lesson and like flexibility and being open to changing your mind and stuff i don't know i feel like and the other thing is even in like the rehearsal process for this tour i had like a set list that I was pretty pumped on and my manager came one of my two managers Brandon came and uh like saw the show and called me afterward and was like I think it's really great he was like I really think this song should should go here and I was like yeah we were thinking about that and he was like well that's my vote you know you, you don't have to but that's that's what I think and it was like made the it made the set way better to like shift the order of of that and it's like I don't ever want to be in a place where people are too scared to tell me if they have an opinion or something i don't i don't i don't seek out opinions for no reason like i feel like some people need validation are like what do you what do you think like at random all the time and i always feel like that kind of invites sometimes people come up with an opinion just to seem like they're adding value to the conversation and like i don't i always feel like i want people to feel like if they have a strong opinion they can tell me but they don't have to like invent you know you don't force an opinion discourse yeah exactly but but you want collaboration right you want collaboration oh, yeah. with those you trust for sure i just don't want like sometimes i get asked by like artist friends of mine like what do you think about this do you, do you want to add some production stuff and i'll like listen to it and i'll be like i don't know it sounds great like i don't i don't really have a i don't have a I, i'm not going to reinvent the wheel here it sounds really good but you know? do you genuinely in that moment have some feelings and <laughs> thoughts and changes and wants that if no, it was no. you from if the beginning? I, if I have feelings and thoughts, like, I'll, I'll, I'll put them in. But a lot of the time it's just, like, it is what it is. And I'm like, yeah, this, is, this sounds great. And, you know, like, I'd rather... I also am a big fan of simplicity. So it's like if I hear a great song with, like, a piano and a vocal, and they're like, what do you want to do on it? I'm like, ah, it sounds really good. Like, maybe maybe some harmonies, maybe a little sub bass, whatever. And it's like, I'd rather be that way than be like, oh, we're going to shake it all up. We're going to change it. We're going to make it this whole thing. Like how many times have you guys heard or like had a person in studio do like an acoustic version of a song and been like, this is so sick. Yeah. And then you hear the full version and you're like, this is way less good. Like this is way less interesting. But isn't that the rule that any good song, in order for it to really genuinely be a good good song it needs to be able to hit acoustically good point like it's stripped good down point. with nothing and then yeah. production really has the ability to fuck up a song <laughs> it's true it's really true well, why do you think artists overproduce 
so often then if it sounds so good being a simpler song? Are they afraid? I think there's probably an entire coterie of reasons why. I would say that in my case, the easiest way for me to do that would be that oftentimes as an artist or as a songwriter, you're, the song is six months old by the time you're recording it, mm. and you've forgotten that the lyrics are good and the melody's good. And so you're like, you have this like, you know, it's like looking at like the the bones of a house and just being like we gotta we gotta add crazy shit on this to like sometimes people forget that like they wrote this beautiful song with yeah. great lyrics and by the time they're in the studio they're like what cool synth and they get really focused on like the drums and the synths and stuff and i'm like man it's like the the song is great. Like you don't need to worry about it. Well, do you ever find yourself doing that, where you yeah. have to tell yourself, like, "Hey, Phineas, let's uh, scale back on this." Oh yeah, for sure. I, I've done that so many times, and then it's like about reining it in and mm -hmm. taking stuff out. And there's also ways to do it. Like, you can be, you can do interesting production and still not shroud the vocal. Like, there's a song on this album called "Hurt Locker" that like is a piano ballad in many ways. But it also has like a lot of drums and stuff, but the drums are like very muffled and very subdued and they're under the whole thing. And I feel like that song in that case was like about finding that like, how do I keep this feeling like a ballad, but also, you know, produce it in this sort of exciting way to me, but not cancel the two out. Are songs like Hurt Locker starting with lyrics? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that one, that one was a lot of songs for me start with like lyric, melody and chords at the same time. And they're sort of like improvisational and then maybe i'll get like a good line and then i'll sort of like then sit and write lyrics so is it about emotional headspace like i mean what is life without consequences like you're describing something very vivid you're, it sounds like you're describing almost like your reality to a certain degree right yeah i mean that song it's delicate there was some it was one of those things where i i had written a couple lines and then was like oh this kind of reminds me of the plot of that movie hurt locker because there's like lines in the second verse about like a, a grocery store there's that scene late in the movie where he's like walking around the grocery store with his kid and he's like all bored <laughs> <laughs> yeah for that song i always think it's like a it depends like just recently i wrote a really specific you know namey song like namey and like i'm saying like the names of my friends in the song kind of a thing and and that one was was very autobiographical hurt locker is more about like emotional context of like what's what's a life without the consequences is like you know something that seems like that's the thing i think about a lot right like your choices and your actions and the things that you sacrifice because of choosing to do something and not the other thing whatever and then it's sort of like how can i take that line and then articulate a whole kind of world around it i, I mean a lot of songwriting to me is like I don't ever want to limit myself to what's happening in my life. I feel like that would be super limiting to like, you know, if I'm in, if I'm in a, a, a loving, happy relationship like I am now, it's like, what am I only supposed to write autobiographical? Like, yeah. you know, you, you only have what your life gives you to, 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 yeah. to work with, but yeah. you can really sit down and tear it apart. Like that's totally true. But I think it's also like, it's like tearing it apart and also sort of taking external you know, influence and, and, you know, running with that and being inspired by it. The nineties. Why was auto tune necessary? <laughs> you sound like the comment section. <laughs> um, I mean, auto tune wasn't necessary. I think, I think that was a, like a case of like the melody of the core. I think I wrote that melody with auto tune. So um, you have it like active, like I yeah, exactly. in your studio. Like in my headphones, I'm like hearing auto tune while I'm writing and it Sick. makes you write different melodies. And I think I just liked the sound of, of the kind of like separation of the notes. It almost feels like a, a keyboard or something. So yeah, I mean, it's not necessary. And but it's also reflective of the nineties. That's true. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want, I always like to sort of be on theme with songs without like, you know, beating them to death, you know. What song was the biggest challenge to finish? Kids Are All Dying was pretty hard, and um, Hurt Locker was probably the longest from from trying to record. Hurt Locker is a B-side from the EP from 2019. I was, like, recording that song then. Why was this project right for it? Well, I, I had more time, and I got it right. Like, I, I had a version for that EP that I was like, ah, oh, this is close. Like, a lot of the... The later drums in the song were already there. 
and I was like, this is cool, but I haven't, I haven't cracked the rest of it. And so then I just kind of put it on the back burner until I had like some real significant time to sit with it and get it right. Interesting. Like yeah. You, how much time will you give to a song or do you feel like a song needs before you can really get it right for public ear? I, it's, you know, it's always depends. I mean, it's like the barometer is just like if I think it sounds really good or not. And, um. That song was like just took a, took a while to get right. Took a while to get the vocals right. I mean, some people believe that like if they don't get it really quickly, that it's not. Yeah, right. I know. I like. There's some truth to like. Those are often like my favorite songs, or maybe the most commercially successful, the ones that happen really fast. But I also have like beloved songs that took forever, and you know, especially in the recording process, like there are songs like, you know, to to go back to Billy's catalog, like when the party's over took forever to record. Uh, we worked on bad guy for a long time like there's a lot of exceptions to the sort of rule of like Expedience that I think people act like is like oh everything good happens really quickly. I'm like, yeah I don't know I work on stuff for a long time and so many exceptions to the point where you just say like there's really no rhyme or rhythm There isn't yeah, there's no that's to me like the the most important thing within sort of like You know trying to make music for a living or like I assume other forms of art although the only one I have real experience in is making music but like it's just not a wrong way to do it it's interesting um I like this shirt by the way oh my Hawaiian shirt thanks yeah it's a little is this Halloween costume Trader Joe's <laughs> yeah. cashier <laughs> is that the vibe you should have a name tag <laughs> yeah this is actually my party shirt <laughs> But I'm I, I dress it in a different way. Like, Party <laughs> shirt? Yeah, dude. I, I I whip this out, you know, go out to dinner at a fancy restaurant for the night. Now this says party me. shirt, like a mock turtleneck underneath it. That's I'm so looking good. for a good time, bro. I love it. Thanks. You look like when you have to be when you have to run the cashier at Trader Joe's at seven and then work the library and then do an night. Apple keynote at eight. <laughs> Hit the genius bar. <laughs> yeah, hit the, that's way funnier. <laughs> when you have to work at Trader Joe's at seven and hit the genius bar at eight. That's funny. I don't think they do genius bar anymore, by that's the way. That's sad. What, I know. Oh, God. You know what? Going to the Apple store is such a pain in the ass. You really got to let them know ahead of time. You make a reservation. It's very much like an exclusive club that I'm not just here for. It's a little like Soho House. Yeah, <laughs> just trying to get in there. I uh, Soho House makes no sense to me. The Apple store used to make me drool as a kid. <laughs> loved the Apple store and now what makes you drool uh um nothing <laughs> like oh uh, uh, to uh, say? uh wrong answer <laughs> uh like restoration hardware oh yeah oh. furniture store like yeah. interior design I feel like that's what that's what gets rich people going I got a lot of friends that love to design they love to just get tear it up put new <laughs> In, and it's like, oh, damn. I deserved that. I feel like after all the Trader Joe's slander, you're like, yeah, you and all your stupid rich friend. That's funny, man. I love interior design stuff now. Yeah, it's true. Uh, ka -ching -ching. Let's go into the kids are all dying. I yeah. love that. Thanks, man. You're talking to yourself. Yep. At what point in this process does that song come? Because it feels like almost like a... Not a pep talk, but like a realization going into making music during one of the shittiest times in modern history. I wrote that song before COVID. <laughs> you knew it. Yeah, I wrote it at no the... No Listen, we forget that the Trump administration was like four years of like... Hell. Just, just like psychological pandemonium. And like the day before coronavirus was like sort of talked about, it was like World War Three was trending on Twitter. Like it was just like a right. chaotic couple of years isn't it crazy how all of that is almost forgotten because of how worse it got um yeah and also it's like dude i was like i was on a i was on the wrong side of tiktok last night somehow you know it's sometimes mm -hmm. tiktok serves you they miss serve <laughs> i got served some like super make america great again content yesterday oh, and all the comments were literally like oh, i miss trump man like the gas prices are too high now and i was like mother like <laughs> The new guy's only been president for like nine months. Give him time. Chill out. And uh, yeah, it's okay. So you talk to yourself though, really, because you you have to go through that period of time where you're like, what do people want to hear? Like shit's bad. Like, do they really want to hear what? Like, yep. Does my burden, my baggage, matter to them? Yes, and also I think what that song is is really about is like I think that that's really I think what people do want to hear is 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 not sort of political commentary that's my personal opinion maybe from select 
you know, maybe if you, like from Rage Against the Machine or Father John Misty or something, you want some sort of social commentary. But I think generally people want to hear songs about partying and love and heartbreak. That's my feeling. And so it was kind of like, you know, in many ways that song was like, how can I, how can I sing about all this stuff when all this shit is going wrong? Like when that's really what I'm thinking about, you know what I mean? And I think the the answer is you still can, but I, I, that was, I think that song was born in a, a lot of ways from like trying to write love songs and songs about having a good time and being like, I can't really write these songs right now because what I'm really thinking about is like everything else. <laughs> everything else. I love how you say in that song, maybe humankind was just God's mistake. Mm. That's such a good line. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't, um, I would describe myself as agnostic, but I do, I do ponder like a, a sort of a, a, a human flawed version of God. Like that's the most amusing, interesting version. You know how like athletes love to thank God when like the Saints win a yeah. game. I always think like, how funny would it be if God really like had like just like a favorite athlete? <laughs> And through their whole life in like college, he's like breaking kids like Achilles tendons, like just like getting this one kid drafted. And then the kid like it's like the star of the team, whatever. And like, like, I just like the idea that that every bad thing happening globally is because God is like focused on like LeBron James. Just and keeping like, him winning. Yeah. And like, yeah. Or like there's some. Yeah, like like a t like a a member of some team is supposed to like go to China for training, and God's like, that would be a bet. Let's fucking let's make a let's make some reason that he can't go to China. And somebody's like, how about a virus? <laughs> and God's like, yeah, that that's fine. Let's do that. That'll keep the kid for him on track. Yeah, yeah exactly. We do it all for that. Him. Every bad thing happening globally is like in the name of uh, giving me more Grammys. <laughs> So is this like a deeper level to the Illuminati? The, oh, higher, technically. Higher level. I think God is higher than the Illuminati. Truth, yeah. yes. Anyway, but that's, yeah, I, there's, there's, I mean, and I'm not the only person doing this. There's like really, there's a really funny TikTok. Have you seen this of like, it's like God and an angel talking about like stuff going down on earth. No. And like, and the angel's like, yeah, they're like cutting down plants and like putting them in their house. And God's like, they're putting them in the window so they can just see nature outside. It's really good. It's very meta. You, anyway. You love TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> I went from hating TikTok to loving TikTok. What changes? I think spending time with it. Hmm. Dude, I had this whole re like revelation the other day about social media. I think social media in general, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, gets this kind of bad rap of like, look what it's doing to our brains, right? Yeah. And the other day I was like, look what our brains wanted. <laughs> look what we made. Look what we needed. We wanted to channel surf forever. <laughs> like that's what TikTok is. We just wanted to channel surf all of the time. Strangers, people we've never seen before. But that's like, it. Human wants are so consistent, yeah. like generationally consistent. It's true. But how it is fed and yeah. fulfilled It used to changes. be opening the fridge. Y it's t 10 times a day now it's just opening instagram we, same impulse well but, but the truth is like it was opening the fridge now it's ordering from an app it was sitting on your tv scrolling now it's doing it on a phone like yeah. like we we have so many holes as people that need to be filled so what? and the holes don't change <laughs> hey -oh. your words not mine yeah, Zach. i'm gonna use that as a transition into around my <laughs> neck so many holes that need to be filled <laughs> uh call you want i'll never let it ring i'm in the best restaurant haven't had a bite of the food. Only want to eat you. That's right. Yeah, man. You don't want to brag about it, though. Yeah, that was like like a song. I, I just thought the beat was really saucy. And I was like, I want to write a salacious song over this, like, sexy beat it's that I was building. So yeah, it starts it with the beat? In that song's case, yeah. You feel the need to fill this hole mm. with, mm -hmm. a, <laughs> with a song right. that is sexy. Yeah. I mean, different, yes? Yeah, I've, I've only, yeah. Rare for me. I mean, very honest. Yes. A scary honest to a certain degree because it's definitely not about somebody else. I mean, that'd be weird. Uh, like then other than me. Yeah. Yeah, it's about me. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love it, but we're in a pretty salacious era. Like I, that, you know, th like it's within the context of me that that song is is sort of 
explicit within the context of pop music. Oh, it's, it's not it, it, very vague. No, but in, in terms of what you share and sure. what you, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, are you, uh, yeah, that this is G compared mm-hmm. to the things that exist. But I really, right. I love the line. I don't believe in forcing conversation. Honest, I'd rather be in your heavy rotation. Yes. Thanks, man. So good. Thank you. Really beautiful. What is it like sharing that with Claudia? I think she was flattered. I hope. <laughs> Does that ever get like easier to do, or is there always nerves when you share a song that you've written about somebody with that person? Uh, what it does is it creates this sort of specific set of like, you know, I hope this person likes this. I feel like when you make a song that's sort of broad spectrum, like, you know, if you have a bunch of people in a room, you hope that like the majority like it. You know what I mean? I get that. And I think when it's like about one person, you're like, hope they like it. It's only about them. Um, no other opinion really matters. Yeah. So she liked it, which was validating. I think if she was like, I hate the song, I probably would have lost confidence in it. There's 13 songs on this album. Is that strategic? Yeah. I mean, there's 12. There's 12 songs with the lyrics, and then there's like a, an in, instrumental about my dog. <laughs> I love it. How does that instrumental represent like your dog's personality? Well, my dog doesn't speak, so that one doesn't have words. Uh, it doesn't. I mean, it's like a. <laughs> I think, like, that. I wrote that. I've written a couple instrumental pieces over the course of, like, sitting at home during lockdown. And, um, you know, the dog the dog sits there next to you on the couch, like, either napping or eating a bone or something. So it was like I was always kind of sitting with the dog. And that was kind of why I named it after the dog. I love that. Yeah. I love, I love my dog. Your dog's amazing. She's pretty great. She's gorgeous. I almost brought her today. I thought it would be, like, no, she's really chaotic, but I she's always welcome next time. I mean, there is a sense of responsibility when you have a dog and it is kind yeah. of like you have a family. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, that's uh, like I didn't feel like I was in a r- in retrospect. Once we got the dog, I was like, oh, this is a real relationship, like co-owning this animal and like together meeting this animal's needs and caring for it. And oh, the dog shit all over the crate last night in the middle of the night let's let's just clean it up right now that kind of like i don't know you can you can not do dishes for a day you can't like not clean up throw up all yeah. over the house for a day like Dude, changes you know. yeah it definitely like puts your relationship to the test and you find out if you're in like a successful one or a unsuccessful one i think and uh it worked out yeah okay. but the first the first couple of weeks we were like what are what did we do? What have we done? But then you get you find a rhythm and everything figures itself out to a certain degree. Yeah. And you just, you, you meet the challenges when they come. Does your creative process change? Like, have you moved studios since Blood Harmony? Like, weren't you doing that from another house? I did most of Blood Harmony on tour. We were in Europe when I was making that and I did it all kind of in green rooms and hotel rooms and stuff, which was hard. It was a challenge. And this? This album was made like 50% in my home studio and then my home studio flooded and had to be completely rebuilt and I went to a room in North Hollywood and did the rest of it, which was like really a pain in the ass, but, you know, it was okay in the grand scheme of things. It sucks not being in a space that you're the most comfortable with? Yeah, it was like, it went from like being at home, you know, with like daylight coming through the windows and sort of like, all the time in the world at my disposal because it's my house and I can work as long as I want, whatever, mm-hmm. to like got to drive across town every day, got to, you know, unlock the studio and turn off the alarm and go in and turn the air conditioner on and the air conditioner sucks and it's hot as fuck in the studio and it's dark, there's no daylight. It was kind of a drag, but, you know, we got it done. You can make, I, I feel like my, my sort of, you know, big, you know, uh, David Goggins pep talk is like you can make music anywhere. That's my like But it's true. It's t- absolutely true and and people have real Voodoo about the whole thing people have a real sort of like I have to be in a, and I'm like you don't have to be anywhere Like you can make a great song Nowhere you can make it wherever you want to be By the way Optimus is the album. There's a link in the description below you must listen. You're putting to it, it in the description. Yeah Yes <laughs> If we, if we remember, we often say that, then we get no, comments no, no. saying, there's nothing in the description. I I'm will, like, uh, that's my fault, actually. I will personally be doing it, <laughs> so it will be down there. Um, someone else's star. It's a beautiful song. Thanks. It's 
honest, took a drive with the whole family <laughs> that you, you've decided was so happy, but you were silent sitting in the back seat of the car. <laughs> what? There's a lot of lines on this record that are like broader, you know. There's room for interpretation. Yeah, but that one is very specifically like just a th I remember being like I have this memory that I have imbued with all this nostalgia of like being in Big Sur with my family and being like, you know, what a beautiful day. And I'm like, I think I was in the back seat, like listening to music on my iPod. I don't think I was like enjoying myself. You know what I mean? Isn't that yeah. weird? That you remember it so vividly or the that you remember it with this like preciousness of like what a beautiful moment. And mostly those moments you're like just sort of Whatever. walking through. Yeah. Which I think is like sort of probably the story of most people's lives, but certainly the story of my life of like these things that I look back on and I'm like, those were the days. And during those days, like, I think I was like bored. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but maybe that really is a sign. Yeah. Right? It's you, totally a your sign. Your great times weren't coming. People do say that like your best times are high school. They're like uh, college years. How was high school for you, Zach? Oh, terrible. How old are you? I'm 28. Okay. I've been, yeah. So you're 10 years out of high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, Nine. What are you, 26, 25, 24? 24. Wow. I don't know. You're 20-some, you know. But you, I didn't go to high school. Yeah, I, you were. I dated a girl that went to high school while, like, that was my age all through high school. Mm. So I was, like, surrogate. Like, I went to prom, and I went to homecoming, and I went to. You got the good Ah, that stuff sucked. Exactly good stuff. I didn't like that I stuff mean, at all. Yeah, relative. I remember a couple of things very vividly. I remember being at prom with my high school girlfriend. Um, and I remember somebody like pogoing next to me <laughs> on the dance floor. Some guy with his other boys. And I remember him saying, we're going to make some bad decisions tonight. <laughs> That's my most vivid memory of John Burroughs. High school prom. By the way, movie ass. Also, the the Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight was on that night, <laughs> <laughs> and all of the attendees of the prom were like, uh, <laughs> like doing pay per view on their <laughs> iPhone, watching the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight. You are on the outside looking in at the, my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Never been in it, but but I also think that lends itself yeah to an incredible artist. Well, I, do, I can't use the word incredible myself, but the, uh, yes, I think, I think a lot of, of commentary is that you have to watch life happen. You mention in, uh, only a lifetime, don't waste your time. Don't waste the time you have waiting, waiting for time to pass. That's it. Yeah. Which is connected to what you were talking about with someone else's star. Yeah. I mean, this album was really, I think if I, if I were half, if I were to have to sum it up, it's like an, uh, my attempt at kind of extrapolating living in the moment and and being present in your life and in your in your body and not something i'm super good at and uh i was uh, i hope she doesn't mind me saying this but billy billy said that whenever she hears that song only lifetime she feels like she's wasting her life <laughs> and there's definitely songs like that for me where like you hear some song and it it makes the or like uh do you know the movie soul the pixar movie yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like a scene where he's like sitting on the curb and a leaf falls down and then he's on the subway and people are looking at their phones and you in that moment in that movie you're like i'm gonna live my life completely differently it motivates you and i wrote only a lifetime and i still feel like i'm <laughs> wasting my life when i listen to that song you know what i mean like i'm like oh man i'm not living up to this song um or you're to the to the goal of this song what was your motivation behind making it was it to be a reminder to yourself yeah i, I felt like i needed it and uh and it was also, that was during the period of, of COVID-19 where there was like no end in sight. There was like, maybe there'll be a vaccine next year. Like that was kind of the vibe. And so I was like, sort of like everybody else, like looking at the clock, waiting for lockdown to be over, waiting to get back to like normal stuff. And then I had this moment of like, you do not know how long that's going to be. It could be two months, could be two years. And also like, there's a lot of joy to be found during this time you know Did if you, you find it oh yeah and i think like and i also you know just like that line in someone else's star i had this feeling of like you might look back on this time kind of fondly like you might you know in my case specifically just like i spend most of my year traveling and travel has a lot of pros but it also has a lot of cons and i was getting to like 
be home and like, you know, paint rooms in our house with my girlfriend and pick oranges off the tree in the backyard and, you know, make orange juice and walk the dog every day. Like there's a lot of simplicity that I'm a big fan of. And I think like at, at moments I'd still be like, oh, can't wait for, can't wait for everything to be normal again. And I had this feeling of like, dude, two years from now, you might like miss this, you know? And chances are you will. Totally. So it was like, don't, don't waste this time thinking like, you know, waiting for it to, waiting for it to be over. You got to listen to this album. Please. Thanks, bro. Optimus, link in the description below. What are you thinking there, Daniel? Well, I, I actually had this question written down a long time ago. I've always wanted to ask. You once described in an interview that uh, some of the sounds on Bury a Friend, you called them unpleasant. Yeah. How do you make unpleasant noises sound pleasant enough to be in a song? Well, I mean, I think on Bury a Friend, they they were sort of purposefully, the end result was unpleasant. Like I, yeah. Yeah, Like that whole album was kind of this exploration into like, you know, sort of spooky, you know, scary stuff. And uh, I think that was a really effective way for to, for us to elicit a, an emotional response to stuff. And the lyrical content of those songs is about death and nightmares. And so I think the, the result, the, the goal was like, you know, I want this to sound frightening. Just like you go to Halloween Horror Nights and they're like, there's an unpleasant smell in the maze like it helps you kind of yeah make people feel uncomfortable but there's also ways to like take a sound that's weird and then make it something beautiful and you've done that before thanks like you add a lot of texture to your records yeah i think it's really fun like with blood harmony there's like crickets in the background yeah, yeah. do you do the same with optimus do you set goals like that to match it yeah there's there's definitely a fair amount of like uh my favorite sound design on this album was was um in uh the kids are all dying. There's like, it sort of sounds like you're at brunch in the beginning and the end. Yeah. And that whole song is kind of about like ignoring, like turning a blind eye to like every problem. And I, I'm never, I'm never less <laughs> politically focused than I am like at brunch. <laughs> <laughs> I get brunch. I'm just like, I don't, I don't even know. I'm like, have you seen White Lotus? Like, I'm, that's like, <laughs> that's me at brunch. And it's also like one of the most, one of my favorite sounds, like the sort of like, glasses and plates clinking and people talking like i love that sound but it's so it's so white it's like the whitest yeah. <laughs> soundscape yeah privileged yeah we're white. at brunch yeah. we're we're eating a late we've already probably had something to eat for breakfast and we're gonna have lunch but here we all are having you know brunch fruit plates and impossible sausage and <laughs> yeah so i do it i will say though that i i had this sort of like Fear, I guess fear is the right word. I got so known so quickly for sound design stuff, right? I'm like talking about it in interviews and I'm like getting to do TV appearances where they're like playing sounds from songs. And I had this feeling of like, ooh, if I'm if I'm not careful, like this will become my like gimmicky thing, you know? And so then it was like a challenge to like, you know, if that's a crutch that I'm leaning on at all, take it away see what you can do without it and so like there's there's none of that on happier than ever i mean there's there's a little bit of on like a song or two but not not that song not the song happier than ever not a bunch of the songs and i think with this album too it was like let's see where i where i need it let's not just do it all the time for because no reason because you can yeah so that level of awareness do you enjoy having that yeah i mean i also think it's just like i don't i think of things from the from the sort of from the perspective of myself as an audience member, like when, when I love a producer or something, but they do the same trick over and over, like I become aware of that. I'm like, oh, they're kind of relying on that, you know? Is your brain kind of wired to listen to random sounds and noises to hear what you could use? Because I remember it was, like, I think Fallon, you described how you guys use something like a crosswalk or something. Crosswalk in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there it's, you know, on a sort of a like, matter of fact level we're at a point where like every kid that wants to make music has logic and ableton and splice and like we all have like all these sounds at our disposal that are sort of common like mm -hmm. you know i love i love hip-hop drum programming but it's like very similar it's very similar yeah. like sort of broad spectrum like when it sounds different we all notice we're like damn that's cool because most huge hip-hop songs have like very similar drums yeah so to me, it's like, 
I love that sometimes, but it's also like I, you know, if you're recording a crosswalk sound in Australia or something, like it's just an easy way to have a sound that like might not be on five hundred other <laughs> songs. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yeah. Is Billy sound different today than it was before? Yeah, I mean, she's you know an evolving human being. And so and are you getting older and and uh, I. Uh, I always want to sort of like evolve with her and you know I think the fun thing about evolving is sometimes you you start here and you go over there and then you can go back to here if you want for fun but um, I think just staying in one place has never been something we're super interested in doing. One of the conversations we had the last time was like people coming to you looking for Billy yeah. sound but yeah. having there not be one pattern to the sound. Yeah. It's true. It's hard for people to go, give me Billy Sound. Well, it's true, and it's also, like, to me, that's, like, the the place that, that sort of music shares with, like, fashion, which I think Billy, you know, Billy has such a crazy, innate fashion sense where, like, she's always on, like, some tip from, like, the future, and, like, sometimes it looks like the past, but it isn't, and it's, you know, the way I always notice it is, like, the kids in line outside the venue of her show look like she did six months ago and like she, with the clothes it's true i don't know it's funny man clothing and music is like this where you where you, if you are innovative you're sort of always a little bit out of fashion like you you do something and people are like what are you doing and six months later it is fucking everybody's doing it yeah, you're setting the tone yeah is it kanye that once said if you're on trend you're late yes sure and he's also like i forget who i was talking about this with but it's like we we've clowned on kanye's fashion stuff so many times culturally i don't mean like me personally but like it's always like what is this shoe and six months later everybody's wearing it <laughs> like it's like and it's like it's stupid that we don't learn that because we do it again mm -hmm. and i'm like what why are you even bothering this time you know you're gonna buy it like yep. and so that to me with music is the same deal like anytime anyone's like this is weird i don't i don't get it i'm like uh eh, you will you will and you'll try to rip it off in six months like it's it's uh, predictable. If you're not setting tone and culture, then you're missing yeah. out. And you can be plenty inspired by stuff, but it's just that, like, yeah, I think it's not worth copying something that is trendy right now because six months from now it'll sound super dated. What song off that album, Happier Than Ever, makes you the most proud? I think probably Happier Than Ever, the song. I really am proud of the whole body of work and, and there's stuff lyrically that we got to do on songs like Your Power and Getting Older that I'm like bursting with pride about but i think just from a sort of a like happier than ever the song is like there's something about that song that like i've been trying to make for 15 years of like the kind of bohemian rhapsody like starts in one place goes to a completely different it's a place roller coaster. yeah and uh and and i'm also like i'm so satisfied that our audience is are receptive to it like when we started playing we've we've only played like five shows but um, we did all these festivals. We did like Gov Ball and Firefly. Sick. Super fun. And the first show, I think we played Life is Beautiful. And it was like, okay, at the end of the show, we'll do Happier Than Ever. And then we'll do Bad Guy. It'll be like the final, final song because it's the sort of like the hit. And like after the show, we were like, it's Happier Than Ever now. And like at the next show, we did Bad Guy and then Happier Than Ever. And like if Bad Guy is like here in terms of audience level excitement like happier than ever it's like here like it's so kids are so into that song right now and that's so exciting so that's a goal you set before diving into this project with her or? not at all i think the goal that i set was like to make a song like that yeah. in terms of the popularity of it like i never try to predict that stuff No, but the sound style Have yeah you just the sort of like the the to me it's always like we wrote that song free of all production we wrote it sitting on an acoustic guitar and Sick. then produced it and so huh. producing it with like the big huge rock and roll ending was just about reflecting the lyrics it was just like i don't, I think we recorded that song quite a while i think we recorded it like last summer like 2020 summer um and it was just about like this really angry you know wronged perspective of like you waste my time and i have never stooped to your level i've always 
maintained, you know, I've always saved face. I don't talk shit on you, uh, you know, talk shit about you on the internet. And it was just about like, how can we articulate this like fury in the right way? Fury that everybody understands. Yeah. Well, we've all, we've all dealt with it. Yeah. And the fact that it started acoustically. Yeah. That's, is there like a, just a, a raw recording of that somewhere? So, yeah, I'm sure like a little voice memo for sure. So you take that and then you figure out how to make this into something that is a literally an emotional journey that lasts yeah. a few minutes. I think it's like five minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's a long song. Were you expecting people to be drawn to the ending so much where you'd have to release an edit of just the second half? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it was, I don't want to take soul credit, but I, I, it, I was my idea to be like, let's just put out the ending also because I feel like, you know, that's like, uh, let's let's use other songs like uh, Pyramids, Frank Ocean. Like, I do that with that song. I fucking skip to five minutes in or mm -hmm. three minutes in or seven minutes in. Like, that's uh, and and sometimes I want to listen to the whole thing and I have enough time to do it. But like, you hear a melody in your head. Like most songs are short enough that like you put them on and you hear the part you want to hear. But like, I'm conscious. Like I don't I don't like making the listening experience difficult. For an audience you know what I mean like I think I mean the five minute version of that song is still way more popular than the other one but it's like I don't I don't want to deprive people of like the ability to just go like right now I want to hear this ending two and a half minutes click it start it that's fine is there a song on the album that you wish you could fix <laughs> <laughs> no I mean I no no it's a funny sure? question yeah I mean that like again it's like you know I kind of, I guess I kind of wish from the perspective of, of like, like my fantasy would be that there would be like, uh, you know, when you watch like a, a YouTube video, like, I don't know what your YouTube format is in this way, but like, you know, you can like put chapters within the oh, context of yeah, a YouTube video. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's one on you. Like I kind of wish that like we were there with me. Like, I wish you could like hit happier than ever. And then there would be like a little like pop up menu and you could like skip move to that chapter of it like that would be a, a cleaner way to accomplish like what we had to accomplish by like putting out a different version of it but um you know we probably won't be there for another like two years as you look at like what challenges are left for you you're kind of there sorry to interrupt you're yeah. kind of there with the apple lyrics thing That's, oh because you can skip ahead and just see. touch a lyric yes you can just touch it are you a spotify person or an I'm, apple music person you don't need to I answer am right? both equally <laughs> They both support our music, and I use both the exact same amount every day. Okay. <laughs> and as and title as well. <laughs> I use title also the exact Amazon same music. amount. Amazon Music for sure, the exact same amount. Deezer, Walmart Radio, <laughs> iHeart Radio. What am I missing, Sam? <laughs> there's got to be something I'm missing. Oh, there's a done. There's a Apa Kabar. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube Music. <laughs> Ardio, uh, Napster. Uh, I'm always doing ads for Napster. LimeWire. I don't think LimeWire still exists. <laughs> As you look at new challenges that you want to conquer, what like what is on your list? Like, do you have a want to work with another artist from an earlier stage or from like a like like and, and yeah. kind of develop and grow their sound again? I'm, yeah, I'm I'm on a tour right now, and as soon as that's over, I I'm in sort of a crunch time on scoring a movie huh. which is really fun you and a lot of work and a, and a challenge and, and intimidating to me in a way that producing and writing for an artist is not right now because it's the movie thing i was like i've never done it i've done i did one movie but that song i remember th you did a song for a movie right the netflix movie uh, yeah what netflix movie what what was that? It was a huge movie. Are you talking about No Time to Die? What, what are you no, talking about? You did didn't you do a didn't you do a song? Oh, for Roma. Him? Yes. Yeah, but that was not to Sorry. picture or anything. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right. I apologize. I was I was really acting like. I mean, there's so many. You know. Uh, Roma's an amazing movie. That was really cool, but that was very different. That was just like for a soundtrack. That was just a song. But you um, have to watch a movie just with no well, music. I'm, I'm scoring it. Yeah, exactly. Which is super fun, and I've always wanted to do it, and it's you know immensely challenging and you know it's it's really cool so that's sort of like the next that's the thing on my plate right now that's like the the biggest like my my kind of like time that i have to work on stuff is like a pie chart and the the sections of the pie chart are kind of always shifting and so right now the the biggest piece is is tour and then as soon as the tour is over it'll be the movie um 
But yes, the you know, in addition to making Billy's albums and making my own albums, the other thing I want to do is like develop, you know, new artists. Artists plural. Yeah, with with them, you know, like, and not out of some kind of like I want to take this kid and be, make him a star. Like I just want to like help somebody create exactly what they want to create from the ground up. Like that seems like it's it doesn't seem it is so much more gratifying and fulfilling than like popping onto some great artist's album for one song which i've done a ton of and it's fun but it's like i'd much rather take an artist from the ground up and like help them realize exactly what vision is in their head and create something can together you, can you describe the type of like fulfillment you feel like when you work with an artist and they release a body of work or they release that comes to actual tangible life yeah i mean you know the only artists that i've done bodies of work for are billy me and then i did two eps with ash where i was the executive producer i was like not even really the producer on it i was sort of like adding stuff and taking it away and you know but yeah the body of work thing is like that's bodies of work are the thing that i fall in love with way more than songs you know like and i love songs but like i love listening to an album on a drive or a flight or you know whatever you want to call it what are you listening for what are you looking for who like when you potentially look for people to work with good question well it's different every time i guess i guess it's like something that i'm connecting to it's like the number one thing like some some element of it and it could be a totally different thing it'd be like a great voice or a great lyricist or a somebody who has a really interesting rhythm i did have a question what's it like getting off stage at your show being like in the spotlight getting on stage at a billy show being off to the side watching her in the spotlight it's taught me how much easier i have it on stage with her with her yeah like i'm you know i'm doing like 10 percent of the lifting <laughs> you know what i mean like i and before I was doing all my own shows, I was like, yeah, this is this is intense. And now I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Got to play like a piano part. Um, it's really fun. I love both. I love watching her interact with the crowd. Like I find that like this is a weird thing to say, but I, I find that I'm I'm kind of more present in her show huh. because I'm I'm sort of watching the show happen. Like I'm playing a piano part that's really familiar to me. I'm not having to worry about it as much. And so I'm like watching the kids all have this moment with billy and i'm watching her do something cool and say something and then in my show it's like i have a longer list of like goals of like i really want to make sure that kids feel really engaged at this show i really want i want to remember to say this thing and thank my team and whatever and it's like that stuff is sort of like taking off enough brain space that like there's a little less room to be like like this is a weird thing to say if I were truly to be like present, present in my show, like I'd just be like standing there, like grinning like a doofus <laughs> for like five minutes. It's true. And like I do it for like 20 second increments. There's moments where I'm like soaking it in, but it's like I'm putting on a show. It's yeah. a perfor it's I'm, I'm working like I'm doing a job. So and, and that's not to say I don't enjoy it. I really love it. But it's just sort of more takes more focus, takes more energy. Hard to be present while you're in it. Yeah. You're like. I'm answering some question and you're like, I'm, the next question I'm going to ask him is so good. No. Like, like sometimes, do you know what I mean? Like, I know you're listening, but you don't, I, but you're doing your job yeah. and you, maybe you'll watch this back later for an edit or whatever. And then you'll be present. Then you'll like really hear what I said. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. By the way, I don't watch a lot of my stuff over again. I do like one I time. I can't do it. I, my interview with you, I watched because I'm a genuine fan of yours. So Thanks, I did man. watch again, and I was like, "Oh, thank you, man." I, I had like, so much fun doing that interview. I was I wouldn't have said yes to doing like anything else today. Well, thank you for doing yeah. this. I, did, you, I told you, I think I told you this last time, but Billy and I did some panel thing years ago, and it was like the the host we weren't a huge fan of. I'm not going to name any names here, but we were like, why can't we just have Zach do it? Oh, Zach. <laughs> that was our, that was our, like, why, why can't it just be Zach? I mean, fuck. It could have the, been me. They were like, they were like, Zach isn't affiliated with this program at all. And he's got a show. And like, he, like this, this thing has this, like it was, it was actually a crazy ask. Do you know what I mean? Thanks. That really makes what, me what feel about, good. What about, let's call Zach. Yeah. This guy.
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. They were like, why would why would Zach want to do this? <laughs> I, I, it's I would, not his show. But I would do anything. Really, I mean, g- genuinely, I, I, I feel understood Thanks, by man. your music every time. You really understand. God, y'all strike something, a common Thanks, chord man. that all people share, and you really bring it to life in a musical, tangible way that many, many artists cannot. And I'm excited to watch you also work with other people. Thanks, man. That's going to be fun. And those you you choose to bless with your time and your talent Thanks, and your man. ear, I mean, you could change lives that way. You know what I think would be the the most gratifying, and it's happened once or twice with like people saying this to me is like when I work on something and people like it but don't know that I worked on it. That's like my favorite thing. Like that happened with that girl in red record, Serotonin. Mm. Somebody was like, "Dude, like, I love that song. I I just found out yesterday it was you," and I was like, "Yes," because to me it's like. I want to be invisible when it's not me, right? Yeah. Like, that's not really how it works with Billy because I'm her brother and it's part of the whole sort of like ethos of the world. But it's like with her and with me, I have a face. But it's like with with Girl in Red, with Bieber, with uh, Camila Cabello, Tovlo. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to take up any of the spotlight. I want it to be that artist, hopefully at their best. And then you look up the track listing and you're like, oh shit, he was involved in that. Is like the, that would be my fantasy. Is the fulfillment the same as if it was your own stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of like different areas of fulfillment, if that makes sense. Different types of pride. Yeah, exactly. And they're, they, they're collaborative. They're like, they make me more grateful for the other part of it. I think if I only did one element of, of sort of creating music, I would be sort of like, unsatisfied but i get to do a bunch of them does having a successful song that is not yours or billy's prove something to you um i guess i just feel lucky the same way that i do when it's mine or billy's i'm just like oh wow lucky that i get the i get (laughs) it feels like it buys me time like buys me more time in the in the career i want to have i'm like oh good like there's my like you know like that's the musical equivalent of like uh being a, a architect and building a house and the person being like fucking love that house like it's you know what i mean it's yeah. like oh cool like that maybe i'll get hired to do another one you know do you feel a need to release on a cycle now like no i don't really feel a need i do feel sort of like a a desire to be like i've the thing i've always wanted to do is like be an artist that it's fun to be a fan of and i think one of the things that makes it fun to be a fan of something is like consistency you know and that doesn't mean like constant overwhelming inundation with things but just like i don't know it's like when i'm a fan of an artist and they like don't put out an album for like six years that's like even if the album they put out after six years is fucking incredible like those six years are kind of painful you know what i mean like oh man i'd kill for another album by this artist so I think I have a kind of a feeling of like without forcing or rushing material, it's like I do want to like have an ongoing dialogue of like even if it's not an album, it's like here's a song. It's something. Yeah. Do, you, do you even have much time though? Because like you listed all the artists you've been working with. You have your tour, Billy's tour, the movie you're scoring. How do you make sure you can put 100% in all these projects? Well, it's a good question and it's it's always changing. Like I haven't had time to work with other people in the last two months really because of traveling and playing shows and stuff but before that it's like I had a bunch of time to work with other artists and got to work with a bunch of people that I I wish I could name right now but like out of respect for their process like I won't but it was like that was a pocket of like we're not playing any shows so let me work with these people just sort of give and take Mm -hmm. Um, but the other thing too in terms of like when I'm on a tour that's like a bus tour like I have such a great crew and they're doing all the hard stuff like the I I work about an hour and a half a day in terms of like the show and the rest of the day like everyone else is setting up for me and whatever and I have like my gear in my green room and like I can work that day so that's like a good way to do it Mm -hmm. travel days is like hard to work but when you're like on a tour and you're just like set up somewhere that's easier that's great thank you doesn't stop no it's more fun Phineas Optimus is the album please listen link in the description below listen to it on Spotify Apple Music, Title, <laughs> Deezer, Walmart Radio, iHeartRadio, <laughs> Napster, Apple Bar. How many songs didn't make it to this album? Like, how many songs did you have to pick One, from? there's a song called 11th Hour that really? didn't make it on this album that 
will probably come out on the next one. How about Happier Than Ever? What? what? Did, uh, did, <laughs> oh, the album. The other has, album. Did any, did, I, this is the issue with a, with the self titled uh, song. I, I was like, I was like, it's Billy's song. I was there like, did I say something? Not so? gonna go on that album. No. Uh, uh, yes, two songs called uh, "Tell Me What I Want to Hear" and "Born Blue" didn't didn't materialize. They didn't exist. Eleventh Hour will see the light of day. Will those other two ever see the light of day? Probably not. Billy Billy is is. Uh, very sort of like in a, a very admirable way like not precious about stuff like that like she's like we tried that song didn't, didn't make, make the cut it. there you go you know which i love about her well because there's a reason why right those songs also are not full songs those were like ideas that never you know were fully realized but 11th hours 11th hours is, is more of a full song and we'll hear it in one day yeah. So you guys aren't the people that write like 500 songs. No, and we're it not. Down. Yeah, we okay. write the songs that are going to be on the record. It's cool. It's true. Yeah. God, thank you for giving us time and energy in the middle of this tour. We'll also put a link in the description if you want to buy tickets because Phineas is probably coming to a city near you, and the it's show true. is incredible. It's you got to see the show though. I mean, the simplicity, yet how complex the aesthetic of your stage show is. The like, simplicity of how complex. It yeah, is. because it, the boxes of white are it's just cool. so simple, but the lasers and the lights. Bring it to life in a new way. I'm really way. proud of it. Yeah. And so, you look buff up there, bro. Thanks, bro. You look good. I appreciate it. God. I, thank you. When you have to go to Trader Joe's at 8 <laughs> and go to the Genius Bar at 9. I'm busy today. Yeah. Happy Halloween weekend. Thanks for having me, Zach. What are you going to be for Halloween? Uh, a Trader Joe's employee. What are you actually going to be for Halloween? I'm going to be a tomato. Huh. <laughs> Mm. Not expecting that, right? Nope. Yeah, what are you going to be? Uh, Sirius Black. Oh, sick. Yeah. Have you been there before? Is this the first no, time? No, the first time. Are you going as a Harry, Harry Potter theme? Claudia and I, are, she's going to be Bellatrix the Strange. Oh, look at you. Yeah, God. pretty cool. Our best costumes ever were, we were uh, Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton from uh, 2019. That cr crazy interview of theirs <laughs> where they're on the carpet and they're like, we f***ed in the car. That's the craziest <laughs> interview. Did you have Look, the vile put, put a link to that in the description of this video. <laughs> that video is crazy. Surely, we'll click below. It'll be right uh, underneath where you can buy tickets to see. Phineas you should on put. Tour. You should put. You should uh, notate. Should say parenthesis tickets for Phineas's tour, and it should be the Billy Bob Thornton, Angelina Jolie link. That's what it should be, so that everyone has to watch it. You got it. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Phineas, Thanks, thank bro. you. My name is right there. I put a name tag there. I know you're dead. No, 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 no. I put a name tag there. People. People always sorry. He looks like people always do that to me. They're like, and uh, Zach and uh, it's good to be here, guys. And I'm like, guys, I put That's a name true. tag here for you. Dan, it's it's a it's a. I feel bad now that I said that. Friendly, like, intimate, like. Do you know what I mean? How often are you say like like it's the namesake of the show? I feel compelled to say Zach's name. No, no, I get it. I get. It. I, sh I regret and then, saying and what I said. And then with you, I might say like man, bro, <laughs> dude, fellow, but. kindred spirit. The same way that I do with, like, my family and friends. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I take back what I said. I regret it. I shouldn't have done it. Like. <laughs> I, lo I feel like, like I. If you're on Conan O'Brien, which is the, you know, no, doesn't exist anymore. You're like, thank you, Conan, for having me. And then everybody knows his name's Andy Richter. But you go like, great to see you, man. Do you know what I mean? Does it make sense? No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I feel like I offended you. And no, I, I think you're teaching Dan something he needs. Right didn't now. offend me at all. You're dropping knowledge that is valuable. Are you listening to the words he's saying? I'm just saying that it's it's a sort of a like it's the brain thing of like were it not the Zach Sang show, I would also say like thanks for having me, bro. But it's because of like it's everywhere. It's the it's I'm seeing it in one, two, three, four, five. Like it's five. <laughs> yeah. There's one little Dan over here. Jesus yeah, no. But what I'm saying is like I can I will often watch artists. Your like, microphone <laughs> says the Zach Sang show. I know, it. I know. Well, Zach wants his name everywhere. He needs people to know it's like his show. Like we get it. But I often watch watch people in your position, yes. kind of like say Zach, and then you can see like a little panic in their eye. They're like, "What's the name? What's the name?" They're like, "Yeah, man." And, and you're like, like, "You're like, I fucking have it." I'm like, "I build it on some building blocks for you." We no, I I've, we've met before. I I, mean, I yeah. understand the impulse, but I know I know who you are. What is it like when people come up to you on the streets? You know, do they go, "You're that guy from that thing on YouTube"? Uh, so, so, or do they call I you mean, Dan? Well, one has happened about five times in my entire life, oh, and I've been sad. here for ten years. But it's usually, oh, you're the guy that works on that show. 
And I'm like, okay, so you don't know either of us. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> That's kind of the name of the, you know, I, uh, when you're, like, you guys are sitting in here with, like, Ariana Grande. Like, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's not, It's more about the guests. If you guys do, if you guys do, if you start doing a podcast with only you two, people, you know. People know. They'll, they'll follow that. But, like, you know, you got, you got, uh, what are they called? Arianators? What are the fans of <laughs> Arianators, her? there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like, they're, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're the you're the guys that got to talk to her in their mind. You know what I mean? Totally. And and by the way, like, I'm not complaining. I yeah. get recognized a fair amount, and For I'm, the I'm first very happy with my year life. of my relationship. I was, like, the guy that was taking photos of my girlfriend with fans <laughs> at stuff. That was, like, that was... Humbling. It was, like, oh, my God, I love your YouTube videos. Can you take a photo? And yeah. I was, like, of course. That's fine. You want that, though. I prefer it. I mean, also, like, you get to see another side. You get to witness again, like, a, a really it. cool moment happening in front of your eyes. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me today. I'm not going to be able to sleep, and I feel bad now. <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ. So bad. Phineas, everybody. <laughs> what are you going to be for Halloween, Dan? Um, I've been Robin for the past five years. <laughs> I got a, I got a uh, costume on sale it's at the perfect. party store, like, five years ago, and I figured I'm running with it. The useless sidekick. It's perfect. Nobody, people often don't remember Robin's name. It's, like, Batman and, uh... You're like, his first name is Dan. <laughs> His name's Dan Robin. Okay, Thanks, Phineas, guys. everybody. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.